Hi and welcome back to Batty.com. Today I am proud to show you our latest product. This is the 1990 through 1996 Corvette instrument panel tester. This instrument panel tester will drive all of the different functions of the Corvette cluster, including the, including the backlights, the telltale lights around the edge, it will drive the tachometer, it will drive the LCD and turn signals, it will drive the high beam display, and it will drive the four gauges on the right. In the box you'll find what you see here. We have the instrument panel tester fully assembled. It has a 90 through 96 wiring harness connector attached, and you'll find a, a standard power supply. Setup is pretty straightforward. First, we'll take the wiring harness connector, we'll plug it into the back of the instrument panel. Next, we'll plug the power supply into the back of the instrument panel tester. As we can see, the instrument panel lights up, and we see the display on the tester light up as well. There are four telltale lights on the left, four on the right. If we see any that are not lit, we'll want to check and replace those bulbs. We're also looking for left, right, and high beam indicators to light. Uh, again, replace those bulbs if they don't. And finally, we see the analog gauges come to life. Uh, the instrument panel tester is designed to test each of those analog gauges. Um, it is uh, it's specifically designed to replicate the midpoint of uh, each of the sensors, the oil pressure sensor, the oil temperature sensor, and the coolant temperature sensor. What we're looking for on each of those needles is uh, that it points to roughly the center point of the gauge. If we see anything else, we might have a problem with a gauge or with, uh, with a connection to the wiring harness connector. Finally, um, we see that uh, we're, we're feeding a 12 volt power supply to the, the instrument panel and we see that uh, it measures approximately 12 volts. At this point we see no display on the LCD. The cluster tester has a menu. We'll press the green button to see the menu. Okay, the cluster tester has a menu. We're going to press green to see that menu. We have some options. We have uh, the year range. The choices there would be 1990 through 1991 or 1992 through 1996. It doesn't matter if you get this wrong. The, the worst that would happen is the, the display, the LCD image would be corrupted. We also have a choice of engine speed. Uh, this is the maximum RPM of the, uh, of the cluster. We want to make sure that we get this correct. Uh, it is either a 6,000 RPM base model or it is an 8,000 RPM LT4 or ZR1. So this cluster appears to be a 1992 through 96 and it definitely has a 6,000 RPM red line. So we're going to choose those two options. Then we're going to navigate up and start the tests. We'll press select. It gives us a review of the settings that we've chosen. Those look correct, so we're going to go forward with next. And it says what we should see on the display is 60 miles per hour and a full tank of gas and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven miles on the odometer. Um, I should I should point out at this point the cluster does not store information about your odometer. What we're doing is just making this information up. The cluster acts more as a display. The central control module and the central control module is what's responsible for and storing your uh, measuring speed, measuring the fuel level, um, storing your mileage, etc. Um, we, we are just presenting the, the LCD with a, with a made-up image to make sure that it's working properly.
So what we see on the display is 60 miles per hour, full tank of gas, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.7. So what we're seeing is correct. Um, we also notice that the display is kind of hard to read. And that's not, a, that's not a problem with the video. That is actually the way the cluster looks to me as well. So that's one of the things that we're testing is, uh, has the polarizing film on the front of that LCD panel faded? In this case, it has. It's not faded uh, 100%, but it's, it's very difficult to read. And um, we'll get you some better images for the, for the manual for this product. But one of the things I wanted to show you is, is one of the things we can test here, and that is, does the display have a nice uh, high contrast or not? In this case, the dis display needs to be refurbished. The next thing I want to show you is um, what the display looks like if we select the wrong settings on the, the, uh, for the year on the LCD panel. So I have intentionally chosen 1990 through 1991, even though I know I have a 92 through 96 panel. And when I start the test, what I see is corrupted data that looks nothing like it should. That just basically tells me I've, I've chosen wrong. The, the cluster is, is really a 1992 through 96, not a, not, a, uh, 90, or not a 1990 or 91. So we're going to back up. We will select the correct year and we'll restart the test. Okay. Since we see the information we should on the display, it looks like it's working as it should. We'll press next. The next screen is responsible for lighting up all of the segments on the display. What, what this tells us is, are there any segments on the display that are not working? If you see anything that doesn't light up, um, it could be that the it could be that the LCD screen is faded. It could be that the LCD screen is defective and needs to be replaced. The next screen is the tachometer test. The first test that we see is zero RPM. The gauge should indicate zero RPM or very close to it. If it does not, that indicates that the needle is not centered on the gauge. You should use a, a small pry bar to pry the needle away from the, the gauge face and reset it at zero while the instrument panel is being driven to zero RPM. We'll press next to go to the next screen. This gives us half scale reading. In this case, 3000 RPM. The instrument panel is slightly over that and when I tap it it goes up even more it's right now it's reading about 3250 rpm so what this tells me is that the calibration I see is starting to fail when we drive this to 6000 rpms later we'll see it we'll see it even more then we'll press next to go to 6000 rpm input and at this point, what we see is the gauge is pointing well past 6,000. It may as well be 7,000, reading 7,000 RPM. Uh, the, the calibration I see in this, in this gauge is defective. At batty.com, we do sell a replacement for that. For both 6,000 and 8,000 RPM gauges. If I were replacing the TAC calibration I see, the tool can be used... Um, to exactly calibrate the the gauge to 6,000 or 8,000 RPM, I would we'll set it at 6,000 RPM. We would adjust the pot on the tack calibration IC until the, the needle read exactly 6,000 RPM. We we'll press next, and the gauge tells us the tests are complete. We should definitely see the needle return to zero. We didn't see that in this case. So what, um, what I can conclude from that is the needle is rubbing on the face of the gauge. I need to use something like a flat blade screwdriver or a pry bar to, to pry that away from the face of the gauge slightly so that it, it's not dragging. Um, uh, the final test that we want to 
the final test that we want to do is we want to look at the back side of the cluster while it's powered up just to see if we have any bulbs that are not lit. Um, some of these bulbs that we see are telltale indicator bulbs. Some of them are turn signal or high beam indicators. These two power the these two are the backlights for that LCD display, and one of the things we see is we've got a bulb out. Um, even though it was it was partially lighting up, it's not completely lighting up because we've got a bulb out. We also see that we have six other bulbs uh, here, seven in some clusters. Um, these are kind of the bulbs in the center, and these are responsible for lighting up the faces of the gauges, lighting up the needles, that sort of thing. We want to make sure that those are all working at the, the correct brightness too. Uh, if you have any bulbs out, Batty.com can help. We set, sell a complete set of bulbs in the correct bases for your instrument panel. There are a couple of other company. <clears throat> Sorry. I have a thing. I have a cold. There are a couple of other common issues with the cluster that we can test while we have the instrument panel tester connected. The first is the LCD connector. If, you're, if the customer is seeing intermittent operation on the LCD panel, it's most commonly caused by a broken LCD connector. So we'll, what we want to do is just push on that connector to try to reproduce that problem. If we're able to reproduce that problem, then the LCD connector should be replaced. Batty.com sells a replacement LCD connector. Another test that we can do while the cluster tester is connected is press on the connections on the wiring harness connector itself. It's quite common for cold solder joints between the wiring harness connector and the PC board. By pressing on the wiring on that wiring harness connector what we're looking for when we press on that wiring harness connector is an intermittent issue on the LCD screen itself. If we see one, if, if we see the display go away and come back when we press on that wiring harness, it's a sign that we need to resolder the wiring harness connector. During that last test, what I was doing is basically pressing on the wiring on the wiring harness connector, and I was looking for any intermittent operation on the LCD screen or any of the telltale bulbs. I don't see any in this case, so that tells me that this is a solid connector. If I did see any problems, I would resolder the 34 connections between the PC board